Hello, welcome back. It's Blue Nose Vest, it's episode 12, and there's been movement. There's been movement, not on game. There's been very, very little movement. But in real life, Karanka, as far as I'm aware, has been given the push. It hasn't been announced yet officially. The time of recording this video is Monday morning. We're still waiting for an official statement from Blues, but it looks like, it looks like Karanka's gone. Which, I don't know, I mean, yes, it's a good thing because he's not been great, but whoever comes in, I think this decision needs to be, like, the Blues board need to really think about this. Like, what are the options? There's no high-profile managers that are going to want to come to a club like Blues at the minute, because we're in a bad way. Like, it's not rocket science to work that out, and people on forums, and we're kind of a laughing stock, which is a bit of a shame. Although, like, we're blue through and three through, so we don't really pay much attention to the people that are poking fun at the the way the clubs run, the way the players are performing, the way the manager has been dire. But it still hurts. It's not nice to, to know that your team is being ridiculed. So I think this next appointment needs to really be thought about. And like I seen last night, my dad told me the news last night being Sunday. And... I looked at the bookies and Tony Pulis was the favourite, which I don't I don't like that. I don't like that. His last appointment was with Sheffield Wednesday and he was atrocious. I don't think we need to see that blues, but then like the options are gonna be limited and that's the that's the issue. But what I'm thinking is hopefully whoever gets the job has a look at Blue Nose Best man, sees the the way that we play. We've managed to get promotion. I mean, they haven't called me for an interview yet. Though I am still waiting. My phone's not on silent, just in case. They do give me a buzz today. I wouldn't be surprised. It's pretty astonishing. If you're new here, basically we've finished our first season and Blues have been promoted. Or well, we have got Blues promoted. They haven't just been promoted. It was down to me. And a few comments from people that have actually suggested some real decent players ricky j jones being that the pinnacle of the transfer coops that we managed to bring in before we started playing i think did we yeah we did we brought him in right at the start of the season young kid but he's done worked marvels worked wonders for us we're not quite ready to kick off the new season i just thought i'd do a video here just running through like the end of the season. I know that I said the last video was the last of the season, but I thought let's have a quick look at the season review for Blues in the season that we've just taken part in. And, you know, maybe the new manager will sit down, watch the first 11 episodes of Blue Knows Best, see that we play the five at the back, but with two real attacking minded wing backs. Pedersen, Collan, don't let him go. Like, make sure you sign a new contract, because I think we're going to miss him next year, but. You know, we've got enough defenders there to, to sit in that three. Maybe people disagree with that. But I always managed made sure that we had two, two bloody strikers on the pitch at the same time. And forget the wingers for now. Because the wingbacks can do that job. So, Bella Sanchez on the bench for a bit. And let's just, I don't know, we're strong enough at the back. I mean, yeah, our defenders are terrible in real life. If there's three of them there, they can they can deal with it. We need to score goals, essentially. Like, we haven't conceded that many. I know we just got destroyed by Bristol City, really. Unfortunately, I beat Bristol City 3-0 in the last season of this. And I was hoping that it was going to be 3-0 to Blues, but it was the other way around, 3-0. But other than that, I've been doing pretty well with the results, like, in the way that games have gone. Comparing real life to my fixtures that I had at the end of the season, it's been pretty close. So, I think the Bristol City game is the first one that's been wrong. Every other game so far, the result has gone the same way. And the goals have been pretty much identical, apart from the Norwich game. I lost 3-2 on the game, and Blues lost 3-1 in real life. So, yeah, it's been pretty close, man. Be interesting to see what the remainder of the real season does in comparison to what I did on here. But let's not forget, we're in the Premier League now, so forget the championship. Like, we do, don't even matter. Competition top scorer for Blues last season was Ricky J. Jones with 18 goals. Average attendance, 23,000. The expected 
finish from the board was in the top half. Well, we did way better than that. Let's have a look. Biggest win was against the Borough, 4-0. Nice. Hogan with a hat-trick. And the match to remember was against Bournemouth away, 3-0 with a Delap hat-trick. Interesting. And goal of the season was from Andy King against Newport County in the Carabao Cup. Shame we didn't score many better than that. Sponsorship stuff, the finances, we did well. Obviously, the success has helped with that. Shirt sales, 10,718 shirts sold. Sturridge being the main man. So it was worth bringing him in just for the merch. El Kayati up there, Leitner. San Jose, why somebody would want to buy that shirt, I don't know. And Leco, interesting. This is how we lined up in the majority of the games. Or so it says, but we never played Ricky J. Jones as the deep line forward, I don't think. There would have been the other two. Or the other way round, sorry. But yet, yeah, Leitner, Sunich there, Pedersen, Yadon, Wimmer, Clark, Salter, Wilmot. Two of them are going, because they're on loan. None of the players have left us yet, because we haven't reached the end of the season officially. The accolades. The awards ceremony. Fans player of the season, Cameron Dawson. Interesting. Young player of the season, Ricky J. Jones. Yep. Signing of the season, Cameron Dawson. Interesting. Goal of the season, Andy King. We know that. Top scorer was Ricky Jade. 19 goals in total. 18 in the league, we just seen. Most assists, assists from Morris Leitner. So all three. In fact, every player that got an award there was brought in by yours truly. Most goals by a player in a league match was Hogan with three. Dawson, clean sheets, obviously, player of the match awards to Ricky J. Jones. Worst discipline, Ivan Sunic, and Leitner gets the fastest goal in 22 seconds. You can't see it there. And the oldest goal scorer was Nasser El Kayati, who still doesn't like me and is leaving the club at the end of the season. No competition awards. History in the making. Once Birmingham got rolling early in the season, it looked hard to stop them going on to this success from Johnny Gordon at Sky Sports. Well done. Birmingham may be brilliant since day one. Early season football was a joy to watch. They're deservedly going up from Rose Reed at Football Whispers. And that's pretty much the end of the season review. So I guess I'll skip through a few of these, um, a few days and a few bits of the news and just tell you if there's anything interesting coming up or like, I don't know. We need decisions to be made. We need signings to come in. We need players to go out. We need to strengthen for the Premier League. Otherwise, we're going to go straight back down. And I really don't want that to be season two of Blue Knows Best. Is just where we're getting hammered by Premier League teams every week. And we end up going back down. So, got to think about this. We've got a bit of a budget. What, let's have a look. 36.3. Almost 36.5 million. We can probably get that up by letting a few players go. Wage budgets. Like, we've got nearly 200k a week we can spend there. Like, who are we going to get rid of? Let's have a look. Forget the reports for a minute. Let's go to selection info and position. Etheridge we're going to get rid of. We're going to bring a new keeper in. We already discussed that at the end of the season. Like, we've only got those two. So, we definitely need to bring one in. Wimmer needs a rest still. Still moaning about it. These pair are going. Clark, Salter and Wilmot. So, we obviously need to strengthen in the centre-back position. Uh, bueno has been average. But he's only young. So, he will get better. But once those two go... We're, we're left very thin. I'm going to try and get rid of San Jose. Gorka Elastondo, I'm not sure. He's not good enough for the Premier League, no way. Neither's Odebadjo, to be honest. Wimmer might be. Bueno might be. Pedersen, I think we're, we're probably going to have to try him. Yadam, again, I think we're going to have to try him. Puyol, I have high hopes for Ricard Puyol. Colin, we know he's going. Leitner, we signed him from Norwich, I believe. Was it? It was Norwich. Obviously, we're going to have to just try Leitner. And we're going to try Sunic. And just see how those two work in the Premier League. It's not the most urgent of positions that need to be filled. Riley McGree is going to bugger off. Back to wherever he's from. Dan Crowley. I don't know. He's on loan until the end of the season. So he will be back anytime soon. Maybe we can try and... I don't know. Make it work with him. I don't know. I don't know what he's attitude is like with us now it's saying that his morale is or his dynamics are perfect where's morale on there or is that it i don't know no that's his dynamics 
He's match fit, obviously, because he's playing for whoever, wherever. I don't know. He's on loan with Columbus anyway, but we'll see about Dan Crowley. Josh Onoma will be leaving us. El Kayati is leaving us. Hogan, is he good enough for the Premier? I mean, you would think so, because he's got, he's got previous there, isn't he? Camposano, probably not good enough, unfortunately. Lecco, not sure. Lecco valued at 10 million. I thought I remembered seeing that. I thought I should show you. Like, Lecco's valued at 10 million quid. Maybe that's something we could cash in on. I don't know. I don't know whether he's going to be good enough for a Premier League. Daniel Sturridge, we know, is good enough. He's a bit old. I mean, he's going to be 32 when we go up, or he's going to be 32 in September, so... But we can still count on him, I'm sure. Although he hasn't been great for us. His average rating has finished on a 7.22 in his last five games. So that's not too bad. Liam Delap's bugger enough. And Ricky J. Jones is still one for the future. Whether he's good enough for the Premier League, I don't know. But there's a few, like... We weren't great in the Championship. We weren't consistent. I know we've managed to scrape promotion. And it's like finishing sixth in the playoffs really does suggest that we weren't one of the better teams. I mean, yes, we're top half, but we weren't one of those better teams. It's turned out amazingly well for us in beating Watford. Still can't believe that we did that after losing to them twice in the season. But we managed to do Watford and then we just beat QPR with probably the best performance that I've seen, like stat-wise and highlight-wise, for the whole fucking... Did I just swear? The whole freaking season. I apologise. So, yeah, I mean... Interesting pre-season start date to be decided. We'll just start when he suggests. Training camp destination. Where shall we send the boys? They've agreed to let me decide where to arrange the next pre-season camp. Under the current plans, the camp would be held in the Algarve in Portugal. And the options are... You can't see these. The options are the Algarve, Spain, the West Midlands, England, Scotland, Ireland, Austria, Switzerland, Holland or France... Should we leave them going to Portugal? The only issue that I've got with sending people to Portugal is that we once the player once the camp squad has been agreed, if we sign anybody else after that, they can't go. But then it would be nice to go to Portugal. So yeah, we'll we'll agree with Portugal. There's the analysis of the QPR game. There's the lone players. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, what's this? Armstrong wins top goal scorer. Ricky J. Jones gets third. Look, very impressive. Very impressive. Oh, cross claim Skybet Championship Manager of the Year. Even though Norwich and Brentford went up automatically, I get Manager of the Year. I'm assuming that's because we had no chance, basically. Come on, Manager of the Year. Why isn't my phone ringing? What's this? This is the vision. Continue remaining in the Premier League. That's what they want us to do, basically. Sign players to sell for a profit is part of the ongoing five-year plan. Work within the wage budget. End of next season, they want us to fight bravely against relegation. Sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. This is the culture. Play direct football and counter-attacking. We'll accept the current vision. Must respond. End of team se End of season team meeting. I'll deal with this, and I'll keep you posted. So, I've skipped a couple of days. Nothing's really happening. In fact, no, I've skipped, yeah, a couple of days. So, I was right the first time. We're getting the scout reports coming through now. I know that in a couple of days' time, we are going to be losing Clark Salter. He's heading back to Chelsea. Valalba's coming back to Blues. So, we're going to have a few players there that... I don't know, if we don't intend on using them, I don't know whether the 5-2-1-2 is going to work again. What's this? I have made an offer for Newcastle's Dwight Gale. Could provide cover. I don't want Dwight Gale. I honestly don't want him. Why have we made an offer for him? Interesting. We've avoided a tax hit. We don't want Dwight Gale. Is there any way that I can cancel that transfer? We've still got all these players that are coming in. I forgot about this. Not all of them, but a few. Wait, is it? All of them? Holy moly, these are all players that I signed. 
Oh, there's players going out as well. Oh, there's only two. All these players are coming in. 1st of July, we've got a bunch of players joining us. And I'm not even sure, because I weren't expecting to be promoted. I'm not even sure any of these are going to be good enough to fit in the team. These were, I was thinking, championship prospects. There's a lot of youth coming through there. A Chelsea boy. Plays left back, centre back and defensive midfield. One from Arsenal, right wing back. But look, there's, the ability rating's not good. But these are all young. Or most of them are young. Stuart Findlay, three and a half star centre back. Coming in on a free, let's not forget. Apart from this one, it's costing us 52k. Liam Lindsay, another centre back. Oh, so it's not... I completely forgot about them. It's not going to be... Like, the squad's not going to be that thin. Maybe we can just... As I was saying during the season, last season, what we really need to do is focus on, like, three or four quality players that can make the difference. Because the squad's not too bad. It's not too... We can surely compete with a few of those those Premier League teams. Like, maybe. <laughs> maybe we can compete. I don't know. All these contracts are expiring. I will look at that, but it's boring for you. So I will come back and deal with those. But yeah, I just wanted to keep you in the loop. Valalba back, look. Three and a half stars. I mean, I mean, he can play the attacking midfield role. Maybe we give Fran Valalba a run in a couple of preseason friendlies and just see. This is one thing that I've noticed. Everybody wants a new contract now. Even though they're already on a contract. His contract expires June next year. But he wants a new contract now. He's currently on 12 grand a week. Let's just go into this and see what he's asking for. Oh no, we'll, I say we'll kick off new. We'll kick off talks soon because I think we need to keep Pedersen. But what does he want? Important player. He wants twenty four thousand. He's doubling his wage basically. He wants to double his wage. But are we going to get a better left wing back? I mean, he hasn't been great. He actually prefers playing just straight left back. But are we going to play that five at the back? I don't know. I don't know. Have I ballsed it up? No, I don't know. We'll think about that. We've got lots of things to think about. Clark Salt has gone. Important dates. Ricky J. Jones named Sky Vet Championship Young Player of the Month. Excellent. He had a good season, man. He had a very good season. That's it. Oh, there's all the transfers. On the 9th of June, look, we're going to get a bunch of players. We're going to get a bunch of players through the door. So, this is it. A new sponsorship deal worth a total of 135000 Well done. That's because we're in the Premier League now. Nathan Beardsley, under-18s fitness coach. There's so much stuff happening right now. I like this time of the season. Like This is when it, it all becomes fun again and interesting. We can sign players. We've got a budget. We can make terrible decisions. I'm pretty good at that. All these people are being scouted here. I like it. Recommended. Joe Waldsmith. Another Sheffield Wednesday keeper. I don't think we're going to make that mistake again. But who are these? Who's this? Michael Elise. Interesting. Four and a half star player there, value 12 million. We could get him between 11 and 21. What I don't want to do is blow the whole damn budget on one player. Who's this? Luca Ravanelli. On loan for Sassuolo or something like that. For Cremonese. Another centre back, four star. This is more my kind of budget 104, 140. Ravalelli's contract expires soon. Oh. We can approach to sign him. On a free. Ooh. We'll offer him exactly what he wants. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The first... The first player that we're looking at bringing in. Yeah, I mean, he's not fantastic. But he's young. But well, he's 24. That's young. He's scouted. He's... He's reasonable. Might be a decent signing. Just somebody to bring in that's not going to break the bank. Because 
we're going to be looking at players that are really going to change things. That's what I want to do. Leitner wants a new contract. What's he on? 11,000. He's already our captain. And he shouldn't be. Contractor is no longer appropriate for a player of my current standing. He wants to talk about a new deal. He's angry. We'll kick off talks in the near future. Don't like this. Let's have a look at what he's looking at. 28,000. We've got lots to think about. Let's carry on. Oh, for Christ's sake. Dwight Soddingale has agreed a deal to join the club. So we have brought in a player that I really didn't want to. Oh, to be fair, he's only on 12,000 a week. Which, I mean, is not... I mean, yeah, it's quite a lot in our terms. But maybe not so much when it comes to footy. Let's have a look at the contracts. Biggest wage earner. Daniel Sturridge, Hogan, Wimmer, Onoma, who's going to be leaving us. Etheridge, who's going to be leaving us, I would imagine. San Jose, I intend to try and get rid of. Okay. And Dwight Gale's going to be on 12 and a half, so he's going to be around here, which is pretty... I mean, we've got a few players that are on real low wages. Ricky J. Jones being our best freaking player is on the lowest wage at the club. At £3,400 per week. But yeah, we'll see. I'm getting a lot of contract people that are coming to me and saying I want a new contract I want a new contract which is fair like they're Premier League players now so maybe their value has increased as well I I assume Ravanelli work permit issue I think we need to start looking for new players so maybe maybe it's time to like oh Pedersen he's unhappy because we haven't talked about a contract I just don't know whether I want to and what's he worth? Six million. Yeah, we need to. Let's get Pedersen on a new deal. Twenty-two and a half. He accepted. That's good. <clears throat> Leitner as well. Leitner needs a new deal. He wanted twenty-eight k. I mean, is he good enough? He's valued at two point seven. He's twenty-eight years old. I'm not sure. When does his deal run out? Next year. We'll think about that. We'll think about it. But yeah, maybe that's the end of this episode. I know it's just been a lot of talk and a lot of nonsense, really. But I thought I needed to get something out there. Puyol wants a new deal. Forgot about that. Like, he's 23. Is he going to be... Like, I love that determination being 18. Let's see what he wants. What's he on at the moment? Four and a half. That's not a lot. Regular starter, yes. 15 though. Let's try him at 10. 14. Let's try him at 13 and a half. Okay, we managed to get that down. A couple of thousand. He's on more than Dwight Gale. I don't know whether I'm making the right decisions here. Puyol work permit. Of course he's going to get it because he plays for us already. There you go. I've uh, brought Dawson on a new four year deal. Upped his wages a little bit. He was on 13. He's now on 24. So, yeah. Puyol's in. Leitner's unhappy. He'd like to talk to me. I'll talk to him in a minute. I just wanted to get end this episode on these new players coming in here. And just see if any of them would have any impact on the starting 11. I'm not sure. Puyol could be on the move. No chance. There's the start of the transfer window. We can now sign players, boys. And girls. Six signings finalised. Questions. Puyol's not going anywhere, so we'll decline that. Are they in the squad now? The new boys, are they in the squad? Nope. So what's going on? Skybet Championship window opens. Now are they here? Any of them? Nope. Oh, Liam Lindsay's one of them. I'm imagining that... Probably most of them have dropped in here. Oh, Fran Valalba's in the... If we remember last season, I was messing with everybody moving all the lone players into the under-23s because it just annoys me seeing them in the main squad when I can't use them. But yeah, I just I notice him. He's a new boy. 
I can't remember who else we've just brought in. Him. He's one of them. Most of these are going to have to just ply their trade in the under-23s and the under-18s, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, transfers in. Transfer history. This may be more. That's nah, better. Findlay's in. Matthew Craig's in from Tottenham. Callum Cisse from Tottenham. Aie Goki from Arsenal. Liam Lindsay and Pierre-Emmanuel Equa Elimbi. From Chelsea. We paid a fee for 100k. Might be interesting. Only 19 years old. But that's it. Those are the players that are in. We don't know who else we're going to bring in. I'm probably going to... Uh, yeah, I am going to end this episode here. I know it's been a lot of jibber-jabber. But I thought I should do a video now that Karenka has gone. Like, let's see what happens with Blues. Hopefully it's a bit more positive. So yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. It's a nothing video, really. New signings to be unveiled. I don't need to go to that press conference because there's nobody of any real, you know. So, yeah, who should we sign? Who's going to help us stay in the Premier League next season? Drop your comments below. I may take your advice or I may just wing it and just sign some players and then start moaning about it halfway through the season when they're useless. I mean, that's the kind of the way that I expect things to go. But thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please do hit the subscribe button. And yeah, I'll put videos on now and again. We're back. It's Blue Knows Best. It's episode 12. Over and out. Keep right on to the end of the road. And I'll see you in pre-season when I've probably spent all the budget. Ow. It sound right, boy.